Hello, everybody. Uh, this is uh, Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Uh, welcome to this episode of Bible Talk with Brother Luke. And today I'm going to continue in the study of the book of John. Uh, if you have not seen the previous studies on John, I hope you will go and watch this from the beginning. All those videos are available on my YouTube channel, Sin City Preacher. But right now I'm going to pick up where I left off last time. Uh, John chapter 14, beginning with verse 16, and uh, I am a KJV firstist, so I will read it in the KJV first, but oftentimes I like to look at it in the Amplified Translation. Sometimes I find that to be helpful. So let's begin. And I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be with you. Hmm. Well, the comforter uh, is the Holy Spirit. Another name for the com uh, Holy Spirit, and it's not only a, a noun, it's, a, it's an adjective, it's a description of uh, uh, what the Holy Spirit does. It gives us comfort, it gives us assurance that uh, uh, our future is guaranteed, that we, we are going to go to heaven, we're going to have eternal life, uh, just as Jesus promised us. So this Holy Spirit lives in each believer forever and he should provide comfort to us now uh, he's, he's called the spirit of truth um, the world cannot receive him well let's read this um, portion in the amplify verse 16 and 17 see how it says and i will ask the father and he will give you another com another helper comforter advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, standby. So these are other words that uh, the Amplified Translation <clears throat> has inserted to help us better understand this meaning of the word, uh, the title, comforter. Um, he will give you another comforter or helper to be with you forever. Now being with us forever, uh, this is just another um, proof that our salvation is uh, secure, that uh, we cannot lose it for any reason. The Comforter will never leave us. He will be with us forever, living inside us forever. When uh, I put my faith in Jesus initially, uh, numerous things happened at that very instance. The Bible says that uh, I was uh, quickened. That means my spirit was brought to life. It's like my spirit was like a, uh, a, a, a branch that was dead. And it, it's like sticking out of me and it's just like a dead branch. But then the Holy Spirit joined to my spirit and it brought my spirit to life. And now I'm connected to God, connected to the Spirit of God. So my spirit was brought to life. It's what Jesus says when, when he says that we're born again, that we're born again from above spiritually. So when we put our faith in Jesus, uh, our spirit's brought to life because the Holy Spirit enters us. This is the baptism of the Spirit. This is the initial entrance of the Holy Spirit into us, bringing our spirit to life. And then the scripture says that we're also indwelled, which means the Spirit continues living in us. And it's, the Bible says that we are sealed, sealed with the Holy Spirit. That means that it's, uh, uh, it's, it's inside us and it, it, nothing else can get in. Like you don't have to worry about other spirits entering you. As a Christian, no demonic spirit can enter me or possess me because I'm sealed. Uh, the Holy Spirit uh, is occupying 
space and no one, nothing else can get in. And the Holy Spirit cannot, will not get out because the Spirit is sealed in me. I am sealed in the Spirit. And, and here it says it's in this way that we are, uh, he is with me forever. So Holy Spirit is with us forever. That should certainly be comforting. Let's look at verse uh, 18, KJV. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Okay. Uh, yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. So he's talking about um, his death, burial, resurrection, and then his ascension. He will be gone, but the Comforter will be here, always li living in the believer forever. Uh, yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more, but ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. Verse 18 and 19 in the Amplified says, I will not leave you as orphans, comfortless, bereaved, and helpless. I will come back to you. After a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live. You will live also. So we'll not only see him. Uh, they, the apostles saw him for 40 days. Uh, after the resurrection of Jesus, he walked among 500 witnesses for 40 days. So they saw him then. And, of course, we will see him again at his second coming and on it in, into eternity. We will see him. We will, he will uh, live with us. Now, uh, it says, on that day, when that time comes, you will know for yourselves that I am in my Father. Well, verse 20, I need to go back to the KJV. At that day, ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. Well, so we know that the Holy Spirit lives in the believer. And the scriptures also tell us that Jesus lives in us. Now, that could be confusing to try to understand all that. And some people would use this kind of a, um, statement to, to prove modalism, that if the Holy Spirit lives in you and Jesus lives in you, that's just further proof that Jesus is the Holy Spirit. See, in modalism or oneness, they believe that uh, there is one God, and it is Jesus Christ. Jesus is God. And sometimes he changes into the Father, sometimes he changes into the Holy Spirit, sometimes he changes into the Jesus uh, but he's one God, just operating in three different modes. So in this way, you can take the, these verses here and defend that position because he's saying that uh, you shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. Uh, however, of course, you could also argue that uh, he says that I am in my Father. Uh, so there's a distinction. Now, personally, I hold to the Trinitarian uh understanding of the Godhead, that uh, there's one God, three distinct persons, and yet one God. The Father's God, the Son's God, the Holy Spirit's God, and yet there's one God. I've talked and taught a lot about that, uh, but uh, there's another group of people that believe that this one God is Jesus Christ, and he just changes forms. Uh, now, here you have... Uh, uh, I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. And I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. He that hath my commandments. I mean, some people would take this to, to be that the commandments of, um, of the Mosaic Laws. Uh, not only the 10 that are written in stone, but all 613 of the, the Mosaic laws that were written down. Uh, 
that's not the commandments that I believe this is referencing here at all. I, the, the commandments of Jesus is he says, I condense it all into these two things. Everything can be condensed into this love God and love your neighbor. So he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he is that loveth me and loveth me shall love my father and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Uh, I think this idea that uh, the teaching that God is love is one of the great proofs of um, Trinitarianism. Because if God is love, uh, love cannot exist without an object of its affection. And so in, in eternity, uh, you had to have the, uh, the God, the, the, the person, the distinct persons in order to love each other. Uh, if you have just one God who is one pr distinct person and in, in, in eternity past, there couldn't be any love because there was no object for, for the love. Um, now, let me read these verses in the Amplified. Um, I will not leave you as orphans, comfortless. I will come back to you. After a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live, you will live also. On that day, when that time comes, you will know for yourselves that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. The person who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who really loves me, and who really loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. I will make myself real to him. So this, this uh, love is uh, an indication that uh, if you love Jesus, that's an indication that uh, Jesus is in you and you are in Jesus. Uh, and he also says that uh, we'll be recognized by the love we have for each other. So love is a, not only a, um, an identification of God, but also a, a, uh, a description of those of us who are believers in Jesus. We are full of love. We love God. We love each other. Now, not everybody uh, loves as much as, as others do. Uh, this is not some universal um, uh, identical uh, description of every believer. I mean, how much love does a person have to qualify as loving? I mean, do you have to be an absolute 100% pure love as God does? No, none of us love that well. But uh, uh, if we, we don't seem to have a love for God, a love for Jesus Christ, a love for each other, then it brings the questions of what's wrong with this person? They, they're not loving. Uh, could this be a sign that they, they uh, are, don't believe in Jesus, that they're not indwelled with the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit hasn't transformed their hearts? Um, let's go back to KJV, verse 22. Judas saith unto him, Not Iscariot, but Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world. Uh, this is another Jew, Judas, and not Iscariot, it says. Um, Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him, and we will come unto him. So the Father and the Son both come unto him and make our abode with him. So we can see here that the Father is actually living in us too. So God lives in the believer. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Now, of course, this is, um, this is hard for our, our minds to comprehend. Uh, the language, language fails us to, under, to understand these uh, uh, these things clearly. Hopefully, in eternity, Jesus says that uh, we look through a dark that's uh, foggy now. Some someday it'll be clear to us. 
I'm looking forward to that. But it certainly is clear that uh, love is the virtue. Uh, I think it's 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 7, I think. Maybe it's uh, 13. One of these chapters is called the love chapter. And it, it, it basically is telling us that of all the virtues, of all the attributes that we can have, the one that is more important than all the others is, is love. So let's let me read these verses here in the Amplified. Verse 22, Judas, not Iscariot, asked him, Lord, what has happened that you are going to reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered, if anyone really loves me, he will keep my word, my teachings, and my father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling place with him. One who does not really love me does not keep my words, and the word, uh, my teaching, which you hear is not mine, but it's the father's who sent me. So we we certainly have to understand and accept that uh, uh, this love, uh, Jesus' commands to love God, to love each other, uh, we, we're to take that seriously. But can you force yourself to love? You can't, I don't think. I don't think you can make a decision to love. It's, it's just how you feel. And, 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 and what determines that? Uh, the, the Holy Spirit changing our hearts. And, and when we're indwelled with the Holy Spirit, from that moment on, throughout our whole lifetime, the Holy Spirit is attempting to transform us. And some of us embrace these uh, teachings of the Holy Spirit, these promptings, these, this effort to, to change our hearts. And, 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 and some people resist it. As a matter of fact, we are all embracing and resisting to, to varying degrees. Um, I don't know if there's anybody who who uh, completely listens to the Holy Spirit as as it's attempting to change our hearts uh, and teach us to love and change our hearts so that we naturally feel love and affection for each other and for, for God. Um, so it's just like so many other things that uh, we're, we're told about uh, following laws and commandments and well, the, the question we have to always ask is well exactly how perfectly do you, do you have to follow the laws to well the bible says if you want to be justified by following laws commandments then you have to follow them perfectly never making one single mistake uh, and I, I think this is this is also uh, a fact about love uh, are we really expected to love 100%? No, because we're imperfect. We're, we're uh, living this body of flesh that still has a sin nature, and there's a struggle. Some people end up being much more loving than others. But I would advise against and caution everyone to not be too harsh uh, judging each other. If you see someone is not loving as much as you think they should be, uh, because none of us are love perfectly let's look at verse 24 in the kjv now verse 25 these things have i spoken unto you being yet present with you but the comforter which is the holy ghost whom the father will send in my name he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever i have said unto you I've always loved that that verse and that that um, principle that uh, these uh, these apostles and uh, so many things happened in this time that they spent with Jesus for three and a half years. Many of them with them from the from the beginning, observing and listening, being taught, being disciples. And uh, I don't know if they took notes. I I doubt it. But um, this scripture tells us that, don't worry, if you didn't take notes, uh, I'll, I will bring this all back to your memory. Uh, I'll make your memory perfect so that you can get the record straight because someday you will be writing these things down for 
for our sake, for posterity. Uh, verse, let's read verse 26 in the Amplified. It says, um, But the Helper, the Comforter, the Advocate, the Intercessor, Counselor, Strengthener, the Standby, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my place, to represent me and act on my behalf, he will teach you all things. And he will help you remember everything I have told you. And back to the KJV, verse 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Well, I, I have peace. I, I, I really, maybe the Holy Spirit is really comforting me personally because I'm not worried about uh, uh, theology and, 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 and uh, the necessarily having to get everything right and and uh, having to um, um, perform in my life and, 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 and grow and mature into a, a great saint. I know that in my life, in 29 years of, in the faith, that uh, uh, the Holy Spirit has changed me and tremendously. Uh, but I, I'm not... Uh, Worry that some people are. Have I changed enough? Have I matured enough? Is this is this a, an indication that I might not truly be saved? I don't have those doubts. I do have comfort and I have peace. And those of you who don't have that, it's, it's sad and it's 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 very common. But uh, he's saying here the Comforter is living inside the believer and wants to comfort, give you this peace. Verse 28, ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye love me, ye would rejoice because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. There's a lot of interesting points in this one verse here. Uh, he, he, says, he says again, I'm going away and I will come again. So when he's going away into the, the cross, death, the tomb, and then he'd be raised and, and, and then with them again. But then he's also going to ascend and he, where he is now at the right hand of the Father, and we know that he will come again. So in several ways we can understand this departing of Jesus and this return of Jesus. Some people might, might have even argued that the second coming of Jesus was his resurrection. But so it, it, it was a second coming in a sense, but it's not the, the, the coming that we look forward to. Uh, like, it, it, like it's all done. He's already come again in the resurrection. No, he will come again and uh, the history will come to a climax and he will set us all up uh, for eternity uh, with new heavens and new earth and new bodies, but uh, uh, so he says, I go away and come again unto you. If ye loved me, ye would rejoice. You would be happy about what he's telling you. Uh, makes me think of Peter, how when he said this once before, Peter, are you? No, there's no way I'm going to allow that to happen. I will, I'll die preventing it. And he said, I think, get behind me, Satan. He says, you don't, you, this is, must happen. And you don't even think about trying to prevent it. And so we, we should be happy. We should be happy he went to the cross for us. We should be happy he's gone and preparing a place for us.
Because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. How is the Father greater than the Son? Well, I, I think that only applies uh, during this 33 years in incarnation of Jesus. Jesus was made a little lower than the angels, the scripture says. He was subordinate and uh, God and man. And, and But it's not that way in eternity past and the eternity future. Uh, scripture tells us that uh, Jesus is equal with the Father. In fact, that's that's the thing that the Jews were so upset about. He, when Jesus said, I and my Father are one, I'm the Son of God, he says, you make, you're saying God's your own Father, making yourself equal to God. That's right, Jesus really uh, was teaching that he is equal to God. He is fully God. He is uh, eternal God Almighty, just as much God as the Father. And yet, as a man, he was less. God the Father was greater than God the Son in his, his, uh, his humanity. Uh, verse 29, And now I, I have told you before it come to pass, that when it is come to pass, you might believe. Many times he'll, he'll make this point, that I'm telling you what's going to happen. Remember this, because, that I said it, so that when it happens, it's just further proof that uh, I've, I'm a prophet. I was able to tell you the future. Verse 30, Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. Let me read verse 30 in the Amplified. But so that the world may know without any doubt that I love the Father, oh, that's verse 31, I will not speak with you much longer, for the ruler of the world, Satan, is coming, and he has no claim on me, no power over me, nor anything he can use against me. In Genesis, I guess, I think it's probably the first prophecy. It talks about how uh, the, uh, the seed of the serpent will uh, bruise the seed of the woman, and the seed of the woman will stomp out the seed of the serpent. And this, this is all, well, it's all prophesied way back in the beginnings of the, the Bible. The, um, uh, so this is, it says that no power over me nor anything he can use against me. It's, it's a, a futile effort. I mean, even if Satan was given credit for causing the, uh, the, the Jews to turn against Jesus, to, to this, uh, for them to, you know, uh, convict him and, and uh, convince uh, Pontius Pilate to convict him and be crucified, even if the Jews were given credit for that and Satan was given credit for inspiring them. Uh, it's a bruise. The, the real, the victory is the resurrection. And the, the, the death on the cross, that's the victory over sin. The resurrection is the victory over death. Verse 31 in the KJV says, But that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, even so do I do. Arise. Let us go hence. All right, that's a good place to stop at the end of this chapter here. Um, I'll pick up with chapter 15 next time. But uh, let me make a, a brief statement about uh, the gospel here. I, I want to make sure that uh, if you're watching this video that you're not... Uh, left wanting, lacking, the, the, the one thing that really I, I need to tell you. And that's the good news, that uh, Jesus is offering you life everlasting. Another way of seeing that is he's offering you heaven. Do you want to go to heaven? If so, Jesus is offering it to you. And the Bible says he offers it to you as a gift. Uh, 
not, not only are you not required to work for it and earn it, but it's impossible to receive it that way. You must uh, accept it as a gift. That, acknowledge that you're not getting it because of what you've done. You're getting it because of what Jesus has done for you. After all, um, the giver of the gift deserves all the credit, all the glory. Now, how did he make it possible for you to receive the gift of life everlasting? Well, he, he, he worked for it. He lived a perfect, sinless life. And the Bible says that when we put our faith in Jesus, we get credit for his righteousness. And, and, and he, so he not only worked for it, but then he, he bought it. He paid for it. The Bible says that we were bought with a price uh, that, by the blood of, of Jesus Christ. God's own blood was shed to pay for our sins on that cross. So uh, he, he bought it with his blood and death on the cross. So now he's offering it to you as a gift. He's the one that worked for it and earned it. He's the one that bought it. And he's the one that's offering to you freely as a gift. So that's what I want you to understand is that uh, don't think that you can go to heaven because you worked for it. You earned it. You have to reject that and instead put rely completely on Jesus as the, the giver of life everlasting. Um, Jesus is eternal God Almighty. He became a man so that he could die for our sins. He died on that cross and successfully paid for all of our sins. He was buried and he was raised from the dead bodily on the third day, proving that he is God and he is Savior and he is the sole source of life. And he offers you life everlasting if you'll trust him. Now, the nice thing about this is that when you put your faith in Jesus, he gives you life everlasting. Everlasting means it's everlasting. It'll never end. You don't need to worry about it coming to an end. You're guaranteed you're going to live forever in heaven because of you put your faith in Jesus. I hope you'll do that now. Thank you for watching. Bless you in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus Christ.